You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you're on Twitter, the gaming drag today, I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake, Sissel's Path. So yeah, all this game just got a huge update. So most of Sissel's Path is done now. We've just got a, according to the dev, we've got a couple more updates and Sissel's Path will be complete and then we can move on to the next character. So yeah. Oh boy, there's a lot of content to get through. So, all right, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> he cleared his throat loudly before lowering the brim of his hat to hide his already obscured face. For the new folks around here, I am Morris, a criminal informant by trade. Your friend Philip is cashing in a few favors for your safety. Morris glanced back towards the road. I assume the Lorelei family's underlings are on the lookout for you right now. It'd be rather troublesome if you're discovered. You lost... You lot best come with me for now. I have a safe place for you to rest and recover while you help sort while I help you sort this mess out. He gestured for us to follow him into his car. As first one I struggled to gently carry Sissel into the back seat. Owen stared at Morse strangely. Uh, have we met before? You look kinda of familiar. No, I don't. Morse snapped the car door shut and revved the engine to life. Follow me. We're heading to the Robin's Nest. Whatever the hell that is. We all squeezed into Morse's beat-up car, with Owen following closely behind of, behind on his beloved eyesore of a motorbike. Exhaustion overtook us during the ride to Morse's little hideout. My eyelids were growing heavy, and my limbs were sore from the night's events. By the time Morse was pulling into that, ding, into that dingy and secluded corner of the city, I was already fast asleep. The car slowed to a stop, and I felt someone gently nudge my shoulder. Huh? Are we there already? I yawned and blinked, raising my head from where it rested on Sissel's shoulder. Hmm, looked like he still hadn't woke, hasn't woken up. Owen poked his head into the car window after parking his bike in the Robin's Nest parking lot. He caught sight of Philip, Sissel, and I curled up in a sleepy pile in the back seats and smiled. Looks like we made it. You guys doing okay? I'm tired. There was a clack as Morse stepped out of the car. You kids can get some proper sleep when you settle inside. I own this entire mixed-use building. There's an open apartment upstairs that you can use as a refuge while we sort out this whole mess. Thanks, Morse. You know, you're a pretty swell guy despite the whole criminal thing and all the glaring you do. Morse shot me a withered look before walking off. I glanced towards the front of the car where Herschel sat in the passenger seat. Looked like he didn't sleep a wink. He was staring anxiously at Cecil's reflection in the rearview mirror, his brow furrowed as he studied his nephew's unconscious state. We noticed my gaze, Herschel quickly looked elsewhere. Hey, it's okay, Herschel. Sissel's gonna wake up before you know it. He's been looking forward to talking with you. Herschel said nothing and hung his head low, his gaze fixed at his feet. I sighed and reached down to gently hold Sissel's hand. Even without, the, even without the whole people trying to murder us fiasco, this would be a difficult rift to mend. The memory of the previous timeline where Sissel ran away from everything and Herschel's broken spirit was still fresh in my mind. Compared to that, here, we still had a fighting chance. I gripped Sissel's hand tightly and buried my face against his neck. Everything will be okay this time around, I swear it. Glancing outside, I spotted Morse approaching a stern-looking bouncer stationed out the front of the Robin's Nest Lounge. The bouncer peered at us, huddling inside the car with a raised brow. And who is this lot supposed to be? They're my guests. Tighten up security for the next few days while they're here. Huh, you're taking in another bunch of strays? That's just like you, boss. Don't worry, I'll make sure the place is locked down from any prying eyes. The bouncer's face split into a playful grin. Are you going to be adopting them like Ginny and Philip? place is turning into a daycare. Even from across the parking lot, I could see Morse visibly roll his eyes before returning to the car. That was Terry, my bouncer. He'll ensure no one enters the building without our permission and knowledge. You're all safe here. Now hurry inside. Philip's bleeding all over the car seats. Heading inside the robin's nest took, took more effort than expected. Herschel and I gingerly carried Cecil's sleeping form through the narrow hallway, taking extra care to not bump his head. Behind us, Philip and Owen were squabbling over whether he should be carried bridal-style or something more dignified. A profound sense of deja vu washed over me as we shuffled through the narrow hallways of the Robin's Nest. I've never actually been here in this timeline, have I? It was Jenny who took me here last time. Owen and Herschel were both befuddled with their own why-the-hell-is-there-a-bar-lounge-hidden-behind-another-bar-lounge moment before Morse led us up a cramped staircase. Morse herded us into a rather small apartment on the second floor before immediately pulling out a first aid kit and fussing over our injuries. Owen and I were relatively unharmed. The worst I got, the worst I got were some chafing burns where I was grabbed moments after falling off a speeding truck. 
Uh, Morris buried himself with a more buried busy himself with bandaging up Philip's shoulder and shoving his swollen ankle into a medical boot. It's like now. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Sizzle was laid out across a couch with an ice pack for his swollen head injury while Herschel got all his cuts and bruises clean. Oh. Excuse me. Thankfully, no one seemed seriously hurt, just a little banged up. Well, now that I'm sure you all survived the night, I'm going downstairs to make a few calls with my contacts. We need to have a clear understanding of your situation with the Lorelei's. You probably believe that they've successfully killed Sissel and Herschel tonight, which lessens some pressure on our, pressure on our end, but His intense amber eyes peered over each of us. They'll be on the lookout for a meddling third party who interfered with their business. You will all be in danger if you're spotted by the Lorelei's at any point. None of you are to leave this building until we find a way to defuse this situation. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Thank you for helping us. Sorry my family's being a pain in the ass. I appreciate the help, man. Philip looked dazed from all the painkillers he just took, but raised his bootleg up as if to say, I'm not going anywhere. Moore shot us all doubtful looks. I know I'm asking for the impossible, but stay out of trouble. I'll be downstairs if you need anything. And with that, the tall informant left us to our own devices. Almost immediately, Herschel quietly dismissed himself and fled to one of the small bedrooms without another word. His face was clad with guilt and frustration and a general storm of anxiety before it was quickly hidden behind a shut green, quickly hidden behind a shut door. Huh, he's not taking things very well, is he? He let out a long, exhausted sigh and plopped down on the couch next to Cecil's sleeping body. I can't blame him. It's been one hell of a day. Just this morning, yesterday morning, he had to confess his greatest shame and secret to Cecil that nearly lost his life. He, I mean, everyone here probably needs a moment to just process everything. I'm sure it'll come around with time. I glanced down at Cecil's peaceful sleeping face. If only, you know, if only Cecil would hurry and wake up. Everything feels weird and quiet without him. Cecil's always had a thick skull on him. I'm sure he'll be fine. What, are you already feeling some of that boyfriend separation anxiety? Honestly, yeah. I just want to give him a hug and make sure that dip in the lake didn't jiggle his brain too hard. I sighed and plopped down on top of Cecil, burying my face in his chest. Come on, wake up. You still owe me a cute pet name. Hmm? What? Owen was holding back a wide grin. You two are so cute! I'm glad I helped play matchmaker for your first date. Sacrificing that fancy restaurant was worth it to see you make an honest man out of Sissel. I'm just glad I don't have to listen to him pining all day. I felt my face flush with heat as I scratched my head sheepishly. Jeez, it's only been like two days. But yeah, it's been really nice if you ignore all the murder and drowning. I'm lucky to have this big lucky to have this big doofus. Owen smirked and waggled his eyebrows suggestively. The real question is, have you guys gotten to third base yet? Gross. What? I just wanted to be helpful in case this will needed my expertise. I can offer plenty of tips to spice things up if you two need it. Hmm. Third base? Amateurs, I've hit home run already. Whoa, really? Already? Oh, our little sizzle finally grew up. When did this all happen? Come on, man, you gotta give us the deets. Behind him, Philip was glaring at his booted leg as though cursing it for preventing him from walking out of the room. I grinned and snuggled closer to Sissel on the couch. Oh, you should have seen it. Sissel does this adorable thing where he does something really sexy to seduce me and then gets flustered when it actually works. On the night of our first date, he was pinning me down to the bed and... I suddenly felt the weight under me shift to Sissel's hand shot to pinch my cheek in an attempt to silence me. You're not gonna give them any examples. I'll never live it down. Some of them that feel your wake. <laughs> Sissel grinned as he sat up on the couch and then winced and clutched his bruised head. I just woke up, actually. The sound of Owen being an idiot brought me back to my senses. He rubbed his eyes, groggily, and took in the unfamiliar room he was in. I... The last thing I remember was sinking into the lake in Boss's old rusty truck. Did I miss anything? Hey, what are, what are you... Just a wheeze as I yanked him into a crushing hug, followed by a grinning Owen who leapt at us with arms outstretched. Even Philip scooted closer to give Sissel a comforting pat on the shoulder. It's good to have you back, sis. How are you feeling? Sissel's eyes softened as he gingerly hugged back. Kind of shit. My whole, my whole head kind of feels like jello. I just woke up and immediately got the life squeezed out of me by the power of friendship. But a bitch drowning at the, at the bottom of a lake, so I guess I'll take what I can get. I let out a laugh and hugged him even more tightly. It's good to have you back, sis. 
Satisfied that Sissel was now away, Gowen and Philip went downstairs to see if Morris had any luck with getting information about our situation. They left just the two of us in the apartment living room. Sissel had insisted that he was okay, but I gave him a thorough pat-down to make sure he didn't have more injuries. Kind of like how you'd fill up a cantaloupe at the supermarket to check for bruises. And then I gave him a second pat-down. I was about to give him a third, but he grabbed my wandering hands and muttered with a flushed face that I could give him a more thorough checkup later, which I happily agreed to. As Sissel took some painkillers for his throbbing head, I caught up with him with I caught him up with everything that happened while he was asleep. His face was grim as we went as I went over the details of Herschel's heavy guilt and how he tried to distance himself whenever possible. Hmm. Like y'all. Alright, y'all, and we are back. Let's jump right back in, shall we? Okay. So Bostil isn't in a talkative mood, is he? Not surprising. I wasn't expecting him to open up right away. Sissel was quiet for several moments before a determined look filled his face. He glanced around the small, dingy apartment. Which room did he lock himself in? Uh, that one on the right? Sissel immediately got up and marched over to Herschel's door. He grabbed on the door loudly. Hey boss, it's me. You still there? He pressed his ear against the door, straining to hear any sign of movement on the other side. There was slight rustling, as though someone had approached but was hesitant to open up. Sissel sighed and glared at the door quietly. It's all right. I understand. Things are kind of a mess right now, and you probably don't want to talk. I'm just asking you to listen. I, I want you to know that I meant what I said earlier, back in the lake. I want you to be part of my life. There's no need to rush things, of course. We can take things slowly, but I want you to be here eventually. You're not protecting me by hiding yourself away. He paused, scratching his chin thoughtfully. How about we sleep things off for the day and gather our thoughts? And then we talk it out over breakfast tomorrow. Sound good? He fell silent. Cecil and I exchanged nervous looks as we both strained our ears for any response. Eventually, there was a very soft all right from the other side of the door, and then a quiet, wistful laugh. How did you know? To, how did you grow up? When did you grow up so fast? <sighs> no clue. I guess I had a pretty decent boss who showed me the ropes. There was another laugh behind the door. Talk to you tomorrow, kid. Yeah. Sissel took a step back from Herschel's room before turning to me hesitantly. Do you think... I gave him a reassuring pat on the shoulder. That went pretty well, all things considered. You think so? I never know what to say in these kinds of situations. I kind of just thought, what would Adrian say and just winged it from there? What? Really? Yeah. Sissel stared at me for several, several thoughtful moments. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but you've been almost non-stop supportive lately. During the preliminaries, the date night, even when those debt collectors showed up. I don't know what's come over you, but it's been nice. I've been thinking to myself lately, I want to be more like you. My face suddenly felt hot as Sissel reached out to grasp my hand. He tried to hide a sheepish smile. I spent too much time moping about bad th how, bad things, how bad things have gotten. It's about time I start lifting people up instead, right? Like you. My stomach fluttered as I squeezed his hand. You're going to have a lot of trouble maintaining your punk bad boy image if you keep being so damn sweet. Sissel grinned. I'll have you know that it's extremely punk to support your boyfriend. That is, that is indeed true. After a bit, Cecil and I wandered downstairs in the robin's nest to look around. We found Philip right at home in the empty, la empty lounge area with his booted leg propped up on one of the chairs. Morse was behind the counter mumbling into his phone in hushed whispers. He, made, he had made himself a steaming cup of coffee, but it apparently didn't occur to him that he'd need to lower his oversized scarf to drink it. The coffee now sat sadly on the far side of the counter, doomed to grow cold without receiving a single sip. Sissel scratched his head and glanced towards me nervously. He had insisted on thanking the guy who put a roof over our head while gangsters were possibly trying to murder us. It was only polite, after all. But now that we were here, it was hard to think of what to say to such a stern-looking man. As we approached, Morris looked up and scanned over us with piercing amber eyes. You're awake. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm doing better. Just a little bruised in the head. Sissel was mumbling very quickly under his breath. Sorry for the trouble, sir. You had no reason to help us, but you still did. So I just wanted to say thanks, Mr. Former Gang Tattoo Artist Man. The criminal informant suddenly looked like a tired and overworked preschool teacher. It's Morris, and I'm not an actual tattoo artist. On the day we met, Jenny called me that day, citing a personal emergency. I dropped everything and rushed over, only to discover that her friend really wanted a tattoo to match his boss's. Philip perked up from his chair with a raised brow. And you said yes? I do not want to deal with crying children. 
Oh, come on, we're at least teenagers at the time. You are all still children. Children that I am apparently stuck babysitting. Try to stay out of trouble, won't you? In our defense, we wouldn't have gone through all that trouble if it weren't important. Children don't do important things. A proper course of action would be to inform an adult. I let out a small chuckle. That's why I called you, didn't I? I tried calling you, but someone suddenly didn't know how to answer their phone. Morshot felt a withered look. I was busy. A VIP on my watch list supported a stolen motorcycle, and I had to make sure no bullshit was abound. But you know. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patron. Thank you all for all, lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate the support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Armor. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to your ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>